Okay, so hi everyone, welcome to this quick overview video of the SRA Standards and Regulations 2019. So the new rule book which is uh, going to be coming in force later in the year. Um, the idea of this session is just to give a very quick overview of what's coming and then in other sessions we'll take a bit slightly more detailed look at what's happening. So um, why, firstly, why, oh why? Uh, is the SRA rewriting the rule book, the Code of Conduct, um, again. Um, I have to just put this in terms of the SRA's words and how they see it. They want to remove the restrictions on how solicitors can provide legal services, and I'll come back to that. Simplify the rules, again, we'll probably have to come back to that to be fair. Um, stripping out a lot of prescription and detail and duplication from the code. Uh, to be fair, they certainly seem to have achieved that objective. Promote innovation and competition. And again, we'll look at how they're doing that briefly in just a moment. The key deadline, 25th of November, 2019. That's when the new rule book is coming into effect. So everything that we're talking about, uh, make sure you're ready in plenty of time for then. Um, in terms of general points, the way, well, the name of the rule book is changed. So it's the standards and regulations as opposed to the handbook. There are now two codes of conduct, one specifically for individuals uh, and one for law firms. The slight complication there being that in reality, uh, most people are going to have to look at both of them if they're working in a law firm to work out what actually applies. So the extent to which that's really simplified matters, I think, remains to be seen. There's a lot been said about the changes to the principles. I think in reality, the ethical principles, the overarching principles haven't really changed. You can't suddenly start stealing money from clients. They've just moved some of those bits and pieces elsewhere. There's not really big changes in terms of the principles, to be honest. It's uh, more um, aesthetic than anything else. Um, similarly, a lot of the other conduct provisions have actually stayed the same um, or are very similar. There are a few key things, and I'm going to talk through in just a moment uh, what those main things are to look out for. And this whole course um, actually looks in a lot more depth at what those, those big changes are. Um, another big thing in terms of presentation is the outcomes and the indicative behaviours from the current code of conduct um, have thankfully been torn up and got rid of. Um, I never particularly liked outcomes because they are just rules. So I think that's what we've got now, rules and regulations. And instead of in indicative behaviours, um, we have, hopefully, we'll see a bit more of guidance. Because what we're left with is a fairly short um, skeletal set of conduct provisions. Um, so it's to be hoped that we get a lot more guidance than we have. Anyone who's working through this course, um, you can open up the new rules in PDF to go through it if you've purchased it from our online shop. Big changes potentially in the market, um, and the SRA is very much leading the way here, and that's what they're trying to achieve with this new um, rule book. A um, couple of things in particular, price transparency. So the SRA introduced um, price transparency rules earlier than most of the handbook. Though some other requirements, such as having to put the digital badge on your website, um, that's not due in until the 25th of November 2019. But for firms doing conveyancing, uncontested probate, summary motoring offences, immigration, unfair wrongful dismissal employment claims, debt recovery and business licensing applications since December 2018 have been required to publish their prices. And the SRA has some quite specific details on what they expect to be published. Um, we do have a toolkit um, with some examples in there. If anybody wants that, just drop me a line. Um, okay, in addition, um, I think this is something that's been missed a bit more. The SRA has updated the requirements in terms of what law firms need to put on their website. There's a specific set of paragraphs that firms really need to have on there about complaints um, and linking to their complaints policy. The websites, um, so historically, the SRA had allowed companies to just put their company registration number um, on the website and on the stationery. In the future, 
Uh, most people do this anyway, but in the future it will be mandatory to have the SRA ID on your letters, on your email footers, um, and on the website you'll have to have this digital badge, which oddly doesn't say authorised and regulated by the SRA, it just says regulated by the SRA. But that's what you'll need on the website. I think what's really made the headlines in a lot of ways in terms of the new rule book is the relaxation in the ways in which solicitors can practice. And hand in hand with the price transparency work that's been going on, I think it's pretty simple to see the agenda here. The SRA is looking to promote competition to try and improve access to legal services for consumers and small and medium sized businesses in particular. Um, I'm not going to go into great depth about these new ways of working here. I've done a couple of articles on it. Um, drop me a line if you want to be directed to those. But at a high level, what the SRA has tried to do is strip out um, a lot of the um, restrictions on how you practice, particularly if you're doing unreserved work. So reserved legal work is things like advocacy, conduct of um, litigation, conveyancing, probate, administration of oaths. If you're not doing those things, um, or if you're competing with people not doing those things, from November you could see some very significant changes in the market potentially. So there could be freelance solicitors. So for reserved work, um, they'd have to be a true sole trader, but potentially you could have freelancers setting up with a slightly cheaper cost base, well, potentially significantly cheaper cost base, given that the average um, insurance premium um, for mandatory terms is, is 5%. Um, and also, um, you can have businesses employing solicitors for unreserved work and selling that in competition with uh, traditional law firms. So we've talked about uh, new ways of offering legal services. This is just a summary from our website. The changes to the qualified to supervise role. Um, in the future, there's going to be a need to actually nominate people to not just hold this structural qualified to supervise role, but actually take some responsibility for the overall supervision of the legal work in the business. In my view, I think there's going to be much stricter obligations under the new rule book um, for the law firm and for anyone who's supervising staff. So not just the partners, um, people with supervisory responsibilities. Um, and we look at that in a bit more detail in the full course. Um, there's going to be an eight week deadline for reporting back to clients after they've made a complaint. There's going to be a duty to identify all clients, even if the anti-money laundering regulations do not apply. So this is to tackle um, bogus law firm risk. Most firms do this anyway, but I know that some litigation firms take the view that they don't need to ID clients, which I think is, is brave. Uh, that won't be allowed anymore from November. The SRA has published at the same time a client care checklist. I've got a separate article available on that with some free guidance um, and examples. If anybody would like that, just drop me a line, but we look at that in a bit more detail in the full course. Um, changes to when problems need to be reported to the SRA. So the concept of material breaches is no more. So if you're a compliance officer, um, those words um, will be very familiar to you. But for everyone in a law firm, when you need to report something to the SRA is changing. So that's important to be aware of. There's also the new SRA accounts rules, perhaps um, the biggest area of change on the detail. A lot of prescription there has gone and one or two unusual little things um, creeping in, although the core principles are the same. Um, we look at that uh, in a little bit more detail in the course as well, um, but we can also recommend if somebody wants a really in-depth session on the accounts rules changes, um, let us know. Okay, so at a sort of high, super fast um, level whizzing through, um, that is the uh, key things that are changing in the SRA standards and regulations from 2019, uh, from the end of the year, should I say, um, and a quick overview of what we look at in a bit more detail in the learning course um, and in the in-person session. If you're interested in the uh, online course, you can grab it from our, our website, www.complianceoffice.co.uk forward slash shop, or drop me a line if you want anything um, in person or a bit more bespoke. Thank you.